Hello, welcome to this lesson in algebra. We're going to continue writing these rational numbers as decimals, which basically means you're going to take fractions and turn them into decimals. That's really what we're doing here. Uh, we'll do a few problems here. The first one is uh, 11 eighths. 11 eighths. The first thing to think about is this is an improper fraction. So we know that the answer is going to be bigger than 1 because we have a bigger number on the top divided by 8. So it's going to be 1 point something, right? And that's what we expect to get. So let's work that out and let's say that uh, what we have here is essentially 11 divided by 8. Now to get started we'll put a decimal here and just put a few zeros at the end. And then we ask ourselves, how many times will 8 go into 11? How many eight times will 8 will go, go into 11? The answer is 1 time. And then we'll do the multiplication. 1 times 8 is 8. And we'll subtract. What is 11 minus 8? The answer you're going to get is 3. And then you'll drag down the next 0, giving you 30. Now, we have the decimal here, so we don't need to, we need to not forget to, to place our decimal up here, but effectively during the division process, we're ignoring all of the decimals. We're ignoring the one here, and we're ignoring the one here. We just pretend they're not there at all. How many times will 8 go into 30? 8 times 3 is 24. That's about as close as you can get, so 8 times 3 is 24. And you subtract, and you can start borrowing and all of that, but really you, you see 30 minus 24. How many do you have left over? You have 6. And then we take this next zero, and we drag it down, and we have 60. Well, how many times will 8 go into 60? 8 times 5 is 40. 8 times 6 is 48. 8 times 7 is 56. That's about as close as we can get. So we have 56 here. And we subtract. What is 60 minus 56? It's just 4. And then we take our, our zero that we have here, and we drag it down. 8 times what gives us 40? How many times? 8 times 5 is 40, so the 5 will go up here. We do the multiplication. 8 times 5 is 40, subtract and get a 0. So because we got a remainder of 0, we can stop, effectively, because there's nothing else to do. So the answer that we got was that 11 eighths was exactly 1.375. Now, a couple of things. Number one, notice that this is bigger than 1. We said it should be bigger than 1 with some change left over. Second thing is, this is a terminating or a finite decimal. It stops. So if you type this in your calculator, you're going to get exactly 1.375, which makes sense from our discussion before. All right, now let's go on and do the next problem. The next, next problem is also an improper fraction. 11 fifth, I'm sorry, um, it's going to be 15 over 11. Now again, we see it's improper. Uh, it, 11 can only go one time in there, so we expect the answer to be one point something. Now let's go ahead and write that down. We'll have 11, actually, we will have 15 divided by 11, and we'll stick a decimal here. With We'll start with three zeros. Um, and we ask ourselves, how many times can 11 go into 15? It can only go one time. And 1 times 11, we write down, is 11, and we subtract. What is 15 minus 11? The answer is 4, and then we drag the next guy down, which is a 0. And we don't want to forget, we have our decimal right here, so we want to bring the decimal and bring it up directly above. But we're ignoring the decimals as we do the math here. How many times will 11 go into 40? Well, 11 times 3 is 33, 11 times 4 is 44. So it only goes 3 times. 11 times 3 is 33. Subtract. What is 40 minus 33? The answer is 7. We drag the next 0 down, which is going to go here. Now, essentially, we keep repeating this process of dividing and dividing and dividing. 